This is a film about distracted driving. We all know that distracted driving is dangerous, right? So why do we keep driving distracted? The statistics about the dangers of distracted driving are compelling. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says distracted driving caused over 3,200 deaths in 2014. Safety experts say drivers are about three times more likely to crash if they're dialing a number while driving and 23 times more likely to crash while texting. And once you are distracted, it takes 27 seconds to fully regain focus on driving. Distracted driving is a buzzword we hear over and over on TV and in public service announcements. We hear it in class from our teachers and at home from our parents. What is distracted driving? It's anything that makes you take your eyes and mind off of the task of driving a car. The most obvious example is texting, but there are many others, like checking social media updates. But let's be clear, our generation didn't invent distracted driving. Distracted driving has been around since the car was invented. The very first distraction was the addition of a passenger seat. Drivers just learning how to operate an automobile were now talking with passengers. As the automobile became more important to daily life, people began to spend more time behind the wheel. Modern conveniences were added to make the driving experience more pleasant, literally to distract us from the boredom of driving. So it's hard not to be distracted when you're surrounded by passengers, food and drink, music, navigation information, to say nothing of your own reflection. And our generation isn't the only one doing it. Adults are now the biggest distracted driving problem in the country. Nearly half of all adults admit to texting while driving, and 98% said they know it's wrong. But let's leave adults out of this. Why do we take the risk? Why is looking at our phones so important that we're willing to risk our lives and the lives of people around us? Why do we ignore the risk? But everybody goes over the speed limit a little bit. Oh, Frank, please slow down. In the old days, so-called social guidance films like Signal 30, Red Asphalt, and Mechanized Death used graphic footage of crashed automobiles and horrifically injured or dismembered occupants to scare teens into driving safely. But we've become desensitized to violent scenes. By the time we're 18, we'll have seen over 200,000 acts of violence and 60,000 deaths on TV and in movies. And that's nothing compared to the content that's on the internet. And even if scared straight messaging was effective, our brains are still developing until we're in our 20s, which can make good decision making difficult. For years, scientists have known that the human brain isn't fully developed until we're about 26. By the time we're 12, we have all of our gray matter, but it takes more than a decade for all of it to become fully wired. The fact that our brains are under construction doesn't mean we can't appreciate the difference between right and wrong, and it's not an excuse for making bad decisions. But we need to be aware that we are at risk of reacting emotionally or impulsively to situations. Neuroimaging has shown that back and forth texting floods the pleasure centers of the brain, the same area that lights up when using heroin. The addictive potential is obvious. It's like a digital drug. When our phones buzz, dopamine levels rise in anticipation, and a new pleasure-seeking habit is formed. In simple terms, you become hooked on your phone. Fear of missing out happens when we feel pressure to be doing what everyone else is doing, attend every event, and share every life experience. That's why we feel the need to respond immediately to texts, even while driving. Peer pressure, to be available, used to mean hanging out after school. It takes on different proportions when it means being available 24-7. Teens and focus groups report that they sleep with a phone under their pillow in case someone contacts them. At an age when self-esteem hinges on peer acceptance, being caught in the demands of always being available is difficult. We all have friends who get insulted, angry, or upset if a text message is not responded to immediately. Fomophobia, this always-on lifestyle we lead, can have deadly consequences. Can you imagine going to school after you killed your best friend in a distracted driving crash?
Our intellect and ability to do mental tasks is just as good as adults. We may not have the same level of experience, but we have the same logical tools, and our capacity to learn will never be as high as it is right now. We are also digital natives. We've always had access to computers, cell phones, the internet, and social media. We have a greater familiarity and understanding of technology than our parents. Every generation is called upon to bring their unique understanding and skills to bear on societal problems. Previous generations fought slavery, cured polio, and tuberculosis. They confronted smoking, drunk driving, and racial and gender inequality. World wars were fought and won by our ancestors. These societal problems confronted each generation, and each generation stepped up to answer the challenge. It's simple. We can be considered the problem or we can provide the solution. This is our problem to solve. This is our time to make a contribution. This video is sponsored by the Maine Bureau of Highway Safety and by Ford Motor Company's Driving Skills for Life, a safe driving solution. Ford Driving Skills for Life was established in 2003 by Ford Motor Company, the Governor's Highway Safety Association, and a panel of safety experts. The program teaches newly licensed teens the necessary skills for safe driving beyond what they learn in standard driver education programs. Recognized as the nation's most comprehensive driving skills program, Ford Driving Skills for Life trained more than 500,000 new drivers through free online and professional hands-on driver instruction. For more information, go to drivingskillsforlife.com.